Welcome everyone to another episode of the Singa Heise video podcast. My name is Jonathan Sylvia and I'm your host. Thanks for joining us. This is another video in a series I'm calling Seven Tips for Singer Taxes. Thus far, we've already covered some of the basics and our first two tips. Tip number one, keep a log of all your income. And tip number two, put all your self-employment income into a separate checking account. So while we're on the topic of using that business checking account, here's tip number three. Only use that business checking account for business. Now that we've put money into the checking account back in tip number two, let's talk about what comes out of it. From here on, only three things should come out of that business checking account. Business expenses, taxes, and wages or take-home pay. I'll talk about taxes coming out of it in the next video, along with wages. But for this video, we're going to talk about business expenses. Only use your debit card or checks for this checking account on things actually related to your business. Here's just a few examples. Parking in downtown Seattle. That red-eye coast-to-coast flight that you take on Delta. Office supplies, recital supplies, studio rental, those lessons that you actually take, coachings, accompanist fees, application fees, union dues, car rentals, bus fare, and on and on and on and on. Now, if you're not a singer and are watching Singer Heise just to get a look into our lives, well, we have very expensive lives. But here's a few things that are not on the list. Utilities, apartment rent, mortgage, groceries, clothing, garden gnomes. These are all personal expenses that are, for the most part, unrelated to your business, except maybe the garden gnomes. One sticky subject is the topic of eating out. I wouldn't buy them out of this account, even if I was traveling and on the road. In fact, I don't track meals as a business expense at all. There are severe restrictions on how much of that meal you can actually deduct. It's 20 or 50% if I remember correctly. And even that much only applies in very specific situations. At your own risk, you might be able to get a bit of a deduction by calling Meals with Colleagues a business lunch. But to me, that feels like you're really just opening yourself up for an audit. This is a case of keeping it simple so that you can spend your time making money instead of spending your time minimizing the taxes that you pay. So for that reason, and because you can only partially deduct them anyway, pay for meals out of your personal account and not your business checking account. Now, when tax time comes, you can have a list of all your business expenses for the entire year. You can download this from your bank, either as a CSV file, which converts to a spreadsheet, or as bank statements like PDFs. Or you could download it with your budgeting software, like Quicken. With that information in your hands, just total it up and you're good to go. While we're at it, yes, you do still need to keep all of your receipts. I have a dedicated box for this. This is my box. <laughs> That's a tenor aria. I should cut that out later. This is my box. The top drawer is for me. The bottom drawer is for Sarah. Now, I keep all of my receipts for the year in here, but I only use the receipts as a backup in case I need to look up something later or in case of an audit. My primary source of information is the business checking account, the data that I download from my bank through my budgeting software. One final word about this checking account before I leave the subject, and this is a very important one. When I said in the last video that you should open a checking account, I really did mean a checking account. I did not mean go get a business credit card. This very important point probably deserves one or several videos all on its own, and I hope to make some budgeting videos later. But for here, I'm just going to focus on one thing. There are no guarantees in this business. If you build up a lot of debt, there's no guarantee that your singing or anything that you do is going to earn enough income to pay off that debt later. And even if you think of this as business debt, in the eyes of the law, it's still personal debt. So you can't simply just walk away from the debt by walking away from the business. It's still yours, even if you're not singing. If you have a ton of debt built up, you'll always be trying to dig yourself out of a hole. And with debt weighing you down, 
you won't be able to take advantage of that opportunity that might pop up because all of your money is already spoken for. On the other hand, if you only spend the money that you've already earned, we avoid that problem entirely. Are we clear? Okay. In the next video, we'll cover the next tip and I'll talk about taxes and take home pay. To end this video though, I realized in my script I may have been a little hard on some of you just a moment ago. Instead, I want to be a voice of encouragement. Encouragement, after all, is part of the Singer Heise mission. So, if you are a singer, or even a non-singer, that feels like you just can't get ahead because of the debt or because of money issues, well, hear this. You can get out of it. You can do it. And I want to help. Send me an email at singerheise at sylviasound.com or get in touch with one of our many social media outlets and I'll walk you through this. I'll show you what you need to do. You can always connect with Singerheise by going to the singerheise.com official website. There you'll find articles and resources all about the life of a working opera singer. You can also connect with facebook.com slash singerheise like, share the posts that come up there, and feel free to comment. You can follow along at Twitter, twitter.com slash singerheise, and use the at singerheise handle there. Presently, you are watching the YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe to that. And of course, there is patreon.com slash singerheise. So if you want to pay it forward and help support the creation of more of these singerheise videos, I encourage you to consider becoming a patron of singerheise. Patron levels start at just $1 a month, so it's something that anybody can afford. Anyway, we'll see you on the next video, and thanks for watching. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my box.